at Kumarakotam in Kanchipuram, Muniratnam Mudaliyar, a senior staff of the Matam, saw Swaminathan. He asked him to accompany him immediately in a fast-moving cart to Kalavai and arranged another cart for the family. The boy thought that he was being urgently taken only to attend on his elder cousin. The staff slowly explained to him that his cousin also had attained Siddhi after only eight days of initiation and that Swaminathan himself was going to be installed as the 68th Shankaracharya. The boy was shocked. He did not know what to do except uttering the word Rama Rama. When he stood before the Adhishtanam of the 66th Shankaracharya, Swaminathan felt an inexplicable tranquility descending on him. With telegraphic consent from his father, procedural rituals were gone through. Jalashayam gatva snatva asmadashramat paramahamsa shramam pradishami Om Bhuhu Sanyastam Maya Om Bhuvaha Sanyastam Maya Om Subaha Sanyastam Maya He was installed as Pujya Shri Chandra Shekhar Indra Saraswati Swamigal, the 68th Shankaracharya of the Kanchi Kamakoti Pitam on 13th February 1907. He Bhagavo Brahma Adhi Vibhoho Mama Hridaye Hridayam Sedatami Swaminathan's mother reached Kalavai, followed by the father. Finding their beloved son turned into an ascetic at a tender age of 13, the parents stood stunned. But the charming sannyasi requested them to permit him to assume his new responsibility, which was obviously God's will. They never met him afterwards. Succession to the Kanchi Kamakoti Pitam required adopting sannyasa from Brahmacharya itself. On 9th May 1907, a grand spiritual coronation of the new Acharya was celebrated at Kumbakonam. After Abhisheka with waters from holy rivers, the young Acharya sat on the sacred silver throne and received homage from devotees. Then he worshipped at some temples. The first priority for the Acharya was learning the Vedas, Shastras and various classics from scholars. To avoid distraction by devotees, a secluded village, Mahindra Mangalam, was chosen for his stay for three years. It became a pilgrimage for the great scholar teachers who were astounded by the extraordinary grasping power of the faint student. Such privileged teachers included learned giants like Mahamahopadhyaya Painganada Nadu Ganapati Shastri, Mahamahopadhyaya Venkata Subba Shastri, Varahur Venkatrama Shastri, Mahamahopadhyaya, Karungulam, Krishna Shastri, and such others. With his love for the rich traditions of Tamil language, the Acharya studied its grammar and literature. Additionally, he was learning English, French, and Marathi languages on his own. With his deep interest in arts, particularly music, he enjoyed discussing its nuances. He was good in singing and playing veena. He 
often went to the small islands in the middle of the river and blissfully contemplated on nature's beauty which were photographed by a disciple under his supervision. His interests included history, epigraphy, archaeology, astronomy and sculpture. He used to visit Gangai Kunda Shorapuram and study the sculptures and inscriptions. When he returned to Kumbakonam, he was fully equipped with knowledge needed for his high position as the head of an ancient spiritual organization. He arranged to erect suitable adhishtanams for his guru and paramaguru at Kalavai where he was initiated into the sannyasa order. He streamlined the administration of the matam. Even at 23, he loved academic discussions with pursuit of knowledge. He convened a Vidwat Sadas and conferred titles on scholars. He arranged essay competitions on dharma for students. Deserving students were given scholarships. He also arranged for the publication of the history of the matam in various languages. At Tanjavur, the Maratha royal family paid their respects to the Acharya and hosted his camp. For the Kumbhakonam Mahamaham festival, corresponding to the Kumbha Mela of North India, the Madras Muslim Youth Association sent 200 volunteers to help the gathering of devotees. In appreciation of the service, the Acharya gifted a silver cup to them. He got the leading epigraphist T.A. Gopinath Rao to examine the centuries-old copper plate grants relating to the matam and publish the same. These are relevant to the history of our country also. He firmly believed in the cultural unity of Bharat from Kanyakumari to Kashmir. He showed serious concern for the country to become free from foreign rule. In 1918, when Kadi cloth was propagated under Mahatma Gandhiji's Swadeshi scheme, the Acharya himself switched over to Kadi for the rest of his life. The Acharya started his Vijaya Yatra in 1919. He travelled initially in a simple palanquin. Later, he switched over to Padayatra totally till the end of his life. At Patishwaram, the Acharya asked the revolutionary patriot Subramani Shiva, who was afflicted with leprosy, to come close to him and blessed that the country would soon be free. For going to Rameshwaram temple, he dared to cross the three kilometers long rail bridge by foot. There was no road bridge at that time. <laughs> 